Eric Fry is promising you 40 years of Nvidia returns in a matter of months. Grabbed my attention, so I thought I'd dig a little deeper and see is there something to this or is this just, you know, noise. Well, let's dig a little deeper. He's talking about an AI slash pharma company, which could be one of those sectors that could blow up. But to really understand this, I sat down and I watched one hour and 20 minutes of this presentation, which was very well done. At the end of which he sells or tries to sell me the one idea for 1800 US dollars. And again, there might be massive value in that. I, I don't know if there is. Part of me was also thinking we should probably charge 10 times more for our coaching program. Just kidding. Um, that's not the intention at all. But in all seriousness, I think it's very easy to understand what the stock is based on the information he gives out in that presentation. So I believe I found it and I want to walk you through, is this the buy of the century or is this a complete flop to get on someone's mailing list? Let's find out. The stock is a pharmaceutical stock. Well, not really. It's more of an AI tech stock that works in the pharmaceutical industry. It's called Recursion Pharmaceuticals. First time I heard of it was today. So I went to my usual resources. I checked, look, what are the what are the sort of school grades of this? And it's D, 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 D. It's not particularly exciting. So, okay, that can happen with startups. So maybe this is a really young business and therefore there isn't really much to it yet in terms of numbers. So I looked at my favorite metrics. I look at gross margin. I look at profit margin. I look at revenue growth. I look at return on invested capital. I look at those things because that usually gives me a snapshot of any business. But well, gross margin is negative. There is a bit of revenue, 45 million, which really isn't very much. And the other numbers are all negative, so they're fairly meaningless. This is one of the challenges with early stage investing. The data doesn't really work out, but we don't give up there, right? So I googled what do they actually do? I went through their website, I dug deeper, and let me read this out to you because I couldn't possibly remember this. They're a clinical stage tech bio company leading the space by decoding biology to industrialized drug discovery, enabling its mission is the recursion OS, a platform built across diverse technologies. Okay, that's where I fell asleep, but they seem to help drug companies make drugs better and faster. That's one of the things where AI Kate comes in. That's one of the things I'm excited about. But Palant here, for example, how they work with pharmaceuticals. So there could be something in this. So I dug a little deeper. So I Watch this clip. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking younger people, like your kids or your <laughs> younger people need to own a stock like this because this is a long-term fantastic idea that could revolutionize the whole industry. Now, Jim Cramer being bullish on this kind of makes me feel, oh, this is really a good idea. Really a good idea. But nevertheless, I persevered. I pushed my old banker brain a little harder and found this. Now, the most recent illustration of investors' relentless thirst for AI-driven ventures, a record rally in drug discovery firm Recursion Pharmaceuticals, following a $50 million investment from NVIDIA. Okay, this is getting interesting. NVIDIA backs them with $50 million. So there's got to be something to this. I know that's about a second of cash flow for NVIDIA, but still, they're not just going to burn their money on something completely pointless. So... I dug deeper. I found the investor deck. It's 101 pages if you suffer from insomnia. That's a great document. But on page 14, I discovered the following. They have a partnership or even a client in Roche Pharmaceuticals. That's a big boy in Bayer, which stems from my home homeland. Um, they're also the... Uh, Monsanto owners and so on. Lovely people. They really care about you and the planet. Yes. Watch all their videos with a lot of, you know, mixed race babies running around through green fields and growing wings and that kind of thing. Yes. Anyway, they got 150 million up front and are ex uh, up to 500 million from Roche. And they also get royalties on sales of the drug that Roche makes from this. That's interesting. And then here is another one. Bayer, they got 30 million up front and 50 million in shares investment. That means Bayer actually thinks this could be a good idea. Otherwise, they wouldn't want shares. That's what equity investing is. And they're getting mid to single digit royalties on net sales. 
and recursion owns the improvements they make to their algorithms. So that's pretty good. And then obviously the NVIDIA partnership we, we, we just talked about. So, okay, it seems the industry, the smart pharmaceutical people with the big heart that beats for humanity, uh, that lot, they like it. So that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more confident. So here is what I do. And I want to make this a very short video so that you get max value out of this. But I want to walk you through two scenarios. There are two things you could do. Well, there are three things you could do. One, you could just run away and say, no. Oh. Or you could be interested in possibly buying this. Now, am I going to buy this stock? Me? No. And I'll show you why. Their cash is running out. Well, they've got about 300 million left. Maybe Bayer and Roche and NVIDIA will give them some more. That might happen. But their cash burn is about 100 million a quarter. So they've got about three quarters of cash left. For me, that's a hard criteria where I say, no, 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 no. Not me and my money. But there is an option. What if Eric is right. What if the stock returns to the $40 it was at in 2021 or even much, much higher? What if this, at the moment, market cap is, one, is $2 billion. So what if this thing goes up monstrously to a trillion dollars, as he implies? Well, let's just say it's going to go back up to $40 because that's a little bit more you know, realistic in the short term. Well, you could buy the stock or you could do something different. And the something different would be to buy an option on it. And let me walk you through this. And you might say, I've never had an options, Felix. Stop boring me with it. Why would I? Would... Give me one minute. And I promise to change your mind. Is that a deal? I think that's a deal. It's a deal. If you turn off now, I will you know, have to go to Winston and tell him about it. I've got on the chart here, recursion soft stock chart. And on the right-hand side here, I've got options, profit and loss. Green makes money, red loses money. And I'm looking at a January 2026 call option at $10. Okay, it's a very simple thing to do. You have an option that expires in two years, give or take. And what does that cost us? Well, that costs us $340. And if the stock goes, say, to $40, it'll make me about 700, 800% return. But you might still be thinking, but surely if I buy this stock, it's more solid, it's safer, and I own the thing, and so on. Okay. So, by the way, I'm a huge long-term stockholder. I'm just walking you through how I deal with high-risk, high-potential investments to minimize the risk. I think that's our job. Min risk, high return. That's really what we want, right? So let me walk you through the numbers here, and I'll put them on the screen. If you're going to buy the stock today, you buy 100 shares of this, right? Why do you buy 100 shares? Let's say you have $1,000 and you want to YOLO in on this next NVIDIA story. Well, you buy 100 shares at $8.37 a share. That's $837. And we'll keep the change, okay? We'll just invest $837. If the stock goes to $40, so from $837 to $40, you will make a $3,163 profit. Pretty sweet. That's a 3.8x. Not quite the 10 bagger you were hoping for, but it's a 3.8x. So here's what I would potentially do. I would use an option to achieve a better outcome. How is it better? Okay, I have the same thousand to thousand dollars as you have with your stocks. So I go and I buy, say, two of these call options. So I use two times $340, which is $680. So I still have a lot more cash left over than you do, but we're not going to take that into account right here. And the stock goes to $40. What happens? I make $2,670 on each of the calls. So I make $5,340 versus your stock, $3,163. I 7.8x, you 3.8x. Who's winning, right? Me. Who took less risk? Me. Who's getting the higher outcome? Me. So why would people buy stocks? Well, if you wanted to hold this for 20 years, then this isn't the approach. But if you wanted to YOLO in on something with a small amount of money because you thought pharma AI is the next big thing and it'll happen in the next two years, give or take, and this is one of the companies that will be part of that, then you do the trade, right? So a lot of people have this mindset that trading is very risky. Stock holding is the safe thing to do. For me, 
if it's a big stock like a Microsoft or something that I think is a great business and I do lots of videos on what I think are great companies, I buy those every week, literally every week, and I intend to hold them till death do us part or until their margins drop. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit funny like that. Darling, uh, did your margins drop today? Yeah, I'm sorry, you out. And on the other hand, I trade to make cash flow so I can use that money to buy some of those great proven companies that I want to hold forever. For me here, the risk is very high. It's a company with almost no revenue, with not enough cash to make it through the year. And it does something that I don't understand. Something to do with genetic sequencing and visualization. And it seems very good. I, I sort of scanned through a couple of scientific papers, which seem to say that what they do is good and it's better than what has been out there before. So if I really wanted to go in on this, I would buy the call option, not the stock. Now, is this financial advice? No, of course not. Just an old, um, you know, former banker here sharing what he what he what he does and what I love and the research I do and and I I love doing this every aspect of this. If you want to play around with how we do this, why we do this, and really learn an actual trading strategy, come and join me. Live trading session on Tuesday. I'll teach you my three step system for beginners that I apply every single week and you walk away with that full knowledge. Like I give it to you literally on a plate. Why? Because quite frankly, you deserve financial education. Like it's as simple as that. Everybody should understand how this works. We haven't been taught it, which is a freaking scandal. And why is that the case? Because, well, look at who donates the most money to Washington politicians. So let me give you a guess. Wall Street. So if you enjoyed this video, share it with a, with a friend, a golden retriever or anything else with two of two to four legs. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Get you out of here on one thing. I need to get a Dan Ives vibe check on Palantir because they're making news this week. Deals, $480 million contract with the DOD. You still a fan? It's the messy of AI. To me, mm -hmm. it's, it's really one of the, probably the best pure play AI name out there. That thing got way oversold mm -hmm. on earnings. 